Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Discover the Hidden Powers of Your ARIMA System. My name is Jack Irwin and I'll be moderating today's event. I'm joined today by our Pacific Regional Engineering and Account Manager, Charles Amio, as well as one of our Senior Applications Engineers, Steve Openshaw. Charles and Steve will walk through the Pontus Live features of your ARIMA system, enhancing your system knowledge and capabilities. Today's agenda includes a presentation from Charles about the Pontus Live software. After Charles's presentation, we will open it up to questions. Throughout the presentation, please ask your questions in the Q&A section below, and we will answer them during the Q&A time. After the first Q&A session, we will then pass things off to Steve, who will be demonstrating the technology. Again, please ask any questions you have uh, throughout the demo, and we will answer them in a second Q&A section, session after Steve's finished. Before we begin, please answer the poll question that you have been prompted to answer on your screen. This will help us better tailor this webinar for you. Excellent, okay. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, we uh, were expecting um, actually a bit uh, more of, uh, of a crowd that would uh, all be existing users. It looks like we have a split room. About half of our audience today uh, is new to the technology. The other half uh, already know what uh, Aramis is. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a brief introduction uh, to uh, who we are and what we do. Um, but first off, you know, the, to address the, the topic of today's uh, seminar um, is about Pontos Live. So Pontos Live is uh, our system um, to perform a multitude of metrology tasks and, um, and tracking. Uh, basically, a few questions that we typically ask people when they're when they're asking us about the technology is, do you need to perform any kinds of CMM measurements? Are you trying to maybe do finite element uh, modeling and uh, testing uh, your parts uh, to evaluate the uh, boundary conditions or maybe the material properties of, um, of your specimen? Uh, trying to do finite element validation, you'll, you'll want to have and make sure that you have the right coordinate system in your, in your test data. Um, are you measuring objects or components from different point of views? Are you measuring or testing um, your uh, your components uh, as they're moving in 3D space and, and going in and out of the field of view of your cameras. Um, we also usually ask about, you know, do you need to position fixtures or parts um, in inside of your assembly? Have you ever wondered if you could use um, measuring features um, that are not in your line of sight with your Aramis cameras? And do you own or have any experience or plan on having experience with a GOM system or software? If you answer to any of these questions with a yes, then most likely this platform is going to be really inter interesting for you, um, as it's it's based off of the uh, of the GOM platform as a whole, and so it's a really simple and um, uh, and easy to use platform if you're using uh, if you're into the GOM ecosystem. Now, some of the benefits and purpose of, of the software and what we're going to present to you today is how can you assess this? How could you use this? Uh, and if you're already an active user, as about after you uh, seem to be, uh, then how can you unlock this feature on your system uh, at no additional cost right now? Um, so first off, like I said, if you're trying to do mobile CMM measurements, uh, we have tools to do uh, touch probe measurements here uh, using and tracking our, um, uh, our, our touch probes in 3D space. We can also do real-time measurement tracking and positioning uh, into the CAD coordinate system. You can see, for example, here on the right-hand side, a little example uh, where we have cat parts in, uh, in the virtual world, and we also see the live view here with the cameras um, and seeing the position and width intolerance or not of each uh, part as they get assembled. We can also have guided measuring procedures and give instructions to the user as to what's the next step to do, um, and if not, give feedback back to the engineering team. Um, we can support multiple alignments, so we can quickly uh, switch uh, the basis of the alignment. If you're familiar with other CMMs, you might be familiar with like fair arms and these kinds of, of machines where you're gonna have pretty strict uh, alignment procedures where you only use a few uh, points to align your six degrees of freedom to align your coordinate system. Um, we can toggle between a multitude of alignments here and also build local best fits using thousands of data points uh, to uh, optimize your alignment. Um, we can also expand the measuring area uh, using reference points. Uh, that's especially true if you're trying to leverage or combine this technology, this software platform, and an existing GOM system. 
um, be it a, an ATO scanner or an Aramis system, where you're trying to have multiple angles and point of view. So again, using Aramis, you are uh, using a single reference image in front of the camera. With Pontos, you're able to really get a 360 of the part uh, and a whole kind of umbrella um, around, uh, around your structure. Uh, you can also actually leverage augmented reality mapping to see on your elements or project things back on your elements uh, and, uh, and find a specific location. We're actually going to do that demonstration later on with Steve, uh, who's going to show us a, uh, a test that he did on a little cardboard box where he just deformed the box. And uh, now that we have that location in, in virtual 3D space, uh, we can use that location to track it with a Pontos adapter and identify the location in real life. So we can see, for example, even though it's not visible on the box, where was the maximum strain location uh, on my, during my test? And where exactly was it in 3D space? Um, and you can also, uh, therefore, you know, do the other way around uh, and maybe locate a, a location where you want to put strain gauges on maybe, or you need to put an accelerometer at a specific location, then you can use this to track and, and identify the right location, position um, your, uh, your other sensor without having to, uh, you know, use tape measures and different kinds of, of reference structures uh, and other tools in order to find the precise location of where you want to put uh, your element. Um, so a lot of augmented reality uh, stuff. You can also do powerful inspections or importing. Uh, um, you can do extensive documentations about the position uh, and create basically quality checks about assemblies or about uh, tracking with your CMM touch probes. And you can also build uh, templates and uh, automate uh, recurring projects or if you're doing multiple parts that are the same, uh, then measuring each and every one of them, you only have to build your project and your structure once and you can repeat this over and over and over. Um, so I'm going to dive in uh, right in now. I'm going to just close that poll really quick here. Um, kind of dive right in. For those of you that are new um, to technology, I, I just want to point out a little bit about um, you know what is uh, our platform, a software solution uh, that we offer. The Pontos Live software is uh, based off of uh, a setup, a pair of cameras uh, that we call the Aramis. These Aramis cameras are uh, two cameras connected together, and they give us 3D information on a part. We basically triangulate locations in front of the cameras using photogrammetry and other, and other principles to calibrate the cameras together. They hack as one. And once you have this Aramis camera, you can really just point and shoot to anywhere you want and build uh, 3D coordinate information from features in your field of view. Uh, now, these cameras allow us a, a few uh, options. And they're a pretty strong and proven platform for the testing uh, world. So if you're trying to do uh, material testing and other kinds of component testing and prototyping. Um, you might be familiar with that technology is using digital image correlation and tracking strains on the parts. Well, we use the same cameras and now we can change the measuring volume to the smaller or bigger field of view, so bigger areas of interest. Uh, we can exchange the camera frame so we can put the cameras on a bigger or smaller bar. Um, and uh, have a robust alignment to the camera so they stay calibrated for a long period of time and it's kind of just picking on and off the shelf to track uh, features. Uh, the cameras uh, provide actually 12 million pixels each so we have really really precise measurements and really fine measurements um, and we can talk some more about this. I'm pretty sure the question is going to come up in the Q&A otherwise and uh, we, can, we can address it then uh, but we'll talk about uh, accuracy at that point, and you'll see the maths are pretty simple here when we're looking at 12 megapixel cameras. Uh, we can get sub uh, mil uh, measurements here uh, in um, in all of our uh, measuring volumes that we've that we've talked about, 700 to 500 uh, to 5,000 millimeters easily. Uh, we also have integrated uh, blue lights um, that are installed on these systems, so you don't have to worry about illuminations and glare and uh, other environmental lights. Um, so really precise technology there uh, to get minimum exposure times and really fast measurements. Uh, and like I said, using triangulations to locate uh, the features in 3D space. Uh, we also have two really amazing features, uh, the dynamic referencing, which allows us to always recompute the position of the camera and of the parts, which means that it doesn't have to be rigid and flexible. Even if the, the cameras move, it does not matter. It is not part of, of our measurement. We measure everything relative to the coordinate system of the part um, that we have in front of us. 
Uh, it's therefore also self-monitoring systems, which will automatically warn the users if there's any sorts of issues with the system, if there's any sort of decalibration that might come in, and it will guide you through fixing those, uh, those issues. So great uh, hardware platform here uh, that we're using. In fact, to acquire um, uh, you know, the points and to build those measurements, um, we would lie if we, we said that the only software uh, and, and hardware solutions that we have um, is the Pontos solution. We at Trillion offer a variety of, of sensors, and all of our sensors uh, could provide you the point clouds that you need uh, to build those, um, those measurements. Depending on your needs, depending on what applications you're trying to do, uh, we can offer a lot of symbiosis with those other products, and that's part of uh, you know what we're going to be showing at the end completely with Steve's last demonstration, showing an example of leveraging a test done with Aramis that is then thrown into Pontos to track the position and find the location uh, of eye strain. Okay, all right. So enough introductions. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. There's a lot of different words between Aramis and Trita, uh and Gom and so on, and. Um, I'm just going to show you a few quick examples here of what's the technology, what does it do, what are the applications, and then we can talk a little bit more about how does it work. Um, so the first example I want to show you here is a digital assembly, and you can see on the right-hand side we have an Aramis system uh, on this uh, wonderful studio stand. Uh, you could deploy this in any lab, any shop floor. Um, and the first thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to track a piece, a part of the assembly. We have this uh, radio console that goes into a car dashboard. Um, and uh, you can see here we have the card dashboard and a few features on the card. So these little white dots right there are little stickers, and they're all that we need to have a, um, a constant recalculations of the coordinate system based on, uh, on the car coordinate system. And we're going to position here um, this, little, um, this little console, this little assembly into uh, the global assembly, and I'm going to pause this for a second, and you can see here at the back of this structure, there's two little holes, and what we're actually tracking are features that are not in the field of use, features that are not even accessible. If you were to try to use a Faraharm or something physical, you could not even track this here. So what we did first is we put a few stickers on the assembly, we created a point cloud, and now we're tracking this uh, features in six degrees of freedom. As long as we see at least three of those dots with the cameras, then we can locate the entire assembly in 3D space. So what we're tracking here is the center of those holes, and we want those center, the center of those holes to be in a precise location according to the CAD, uh, to the CAD of this assembly. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're bringing this assembly, sorry, I restarted. Uh, we're bringing this assembly and tracking those features that are hidden to us. And as we're positioning the, 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 whole, um, the whole part, you can see at the top there, the position in X, Y, Z of the center of those two holes, and if they are or not wind tolerant, but you're also getting the full uh, displacement um, or position error of the entire assembly showing us uh, whether or not the entire structure is in the right place. Okay, I'll just start it once more time, once again. And you can see here, oops, it, okay, it stopped for a second. You can see here this live mesh with color projection showing us the quality uh, of the whole assembly, okay? Um, oops, let's keep on doing the same thing, sorry. Uh, the next one is another similar application here uh, where we have this uh, little kind of structure in there and without any tools, again, we're going to track this assembly, and we care about the holes that are at the bottom, uh, and we are tracking the location of those two holes under the structure as it's being assembled. Sorry, the two videos should have played at the same time. There you go. All right, so you have the, um, the visual overlay in the software as well as the live image uh, overlay giving us the information of location. So no tools, we're simply scanning with Pontos those point clouds and then tracking each point cloud relative to each other in CAD coordinate system to track their location. We can also uh, have you know, uh, more complete uh, visualization here. We're looking at a whole fixture assembly and we can track also the fixture. So especially if you're trying to do some testing, 
You can think about how can I make sure I align properly maybe the grips on my log frame, or how do I make sure um, that, uh, that my structure is clamped the right way and there's no twisting or bending. And you can set those challenges by tracking the assembly and tracking the fixture itself to make sure that all of your fixture positioning is adequate to start with. It comes back to what we discussed at the very beginning when we were saying, hey, so if I'm trying to do finite element validation, I can for sure get a lot more data information um, about my, uh, my test using uh, full uh, Aramis technologies and, and full uh, digital image correlation uh, techniques. But if to start with my, my boundary conditions are not even adequate, then the rest of it um, is all based off of that. So you can track here the fixtures uh, and measure the positions and the alignment um, of a fixture before you start your test to make sure that you're within tolerance uh, to start. Okay. Another example here, a similar situation here where we're talking about clamping the fixture before we start maybe bending it or twisting it. And when we do that, we're also going to assume some uh, preliminary shape uh, changes. Uh, and if that clamping uh, induces different boundary conditions in our model, we should definitely check that up and we should measure, uh, measure this. So if you're familiar also with Aramis, I'm just going to say that uh, for, for this group uh, of people, but if you're familiar with Aramis, right, you always have your reference picture. All of your measurement is based on the first picture that you take, and that first picture is going to induce, you know, tracking how a bit of twist or bend or change shape and, uh, and, and shape. But Pontos offers you the ability to not do that based off of one reference picture, but instead based this off of a reference virtual position. In other words, Compare it not to its initial picture you took, but compare it to the CAD structure. How far from the ideal conditions am I when I'm doing this here? Um, before I start taking my pictures, and probably my part is actually not like the CAD. So start with it bended and twisted, and it doesn't come out of production the exact same ones we wanted it to be. But how exactly is it twisted and, and so on compared to the CAD file? That's exactly where Pontos can be leveraged comparing information to virtual um, coordinate systems and then bringing it into Aramis and comparing from your reference, from your first pictures into uh, the future. Um, okay, we talked a little bit about assemblies, about coordinates, but the very first thing I mentioned when I started the presentation is saying if you have optical CMM uh, requirements, then this is for you. Well, let me show you this uh, quick video here, shoot an example of the touch probe I was talking about. So on the left hand side, you can see here, uh, Stefan is holding that touch probe and we have the same part that we were seeing earlier, right? So those two little holes. And uh, the task that we're trying to do here instead is not so much position into the assembly to start, but actually just measure the hole size. What's the diameter of that, of, of that hole right now uh, based on how it was, it was manufactured? So we could do this, of course, with, with a regular CMM, but with an optical CMM, um, we get a little bit more flexibility. And again, that self uh, diagnostic uh, of, the, of the system, uh, constantly recomputing its position uh, so that all of your data is in CAD coordinate system. What we're seeing here is that little live overview. It automatically shows us the touch probe tip in the virtual um, view. So on the right hand side here, you can see uh, the touch probe. Uh, it's, positioned, um, it's positioned automatically in the CAD coordinate system, which is what you can see on the right hand side here. Um, and what we're trying to do is, first off, build a plane. So we want to create the normal of the surface. And we have tools to automatically build those uh, and automatically do best fits of, uh, of the plane. So if you wanted, you could do 5, 15, 20 points to create your surface, to sort of create your plane, and minimize error as well. So you're not necessarily limited to the amount of points that you input in there. The second part of it, once we have the normal of the surface, is to say, well, I'd like to measure that circle right there at that surface. And so creating a best fit circle using five points here, well, at, at four points, it started computing the deviations of that hole. And we're starting to see these uh, information show up. We're talking here about, you know, micron levels of, uh, of best fit hairs. So we're, we're down to uh, 0 .034, so roughly a mil here, uh, up to two mils uh, in, in the hole positioning. Um, and we're measuring here that circle and automatically inspecting the circle. And again, comparing it to the CAD model saying, hey, this hole should have been precisely 
uh, certain amount. So we're going to check that measurement and compare it to the CAD file to get our quality checks instantly generated inside of the software. So right there, inspecting the radius against the nominal value, that circle should have been three millimeters, and we're seeing how did it uh, deviate from that value. If you're familiar with Aramis, you'll notice here the interface is really similar, the same pop-ups, the same eye inspect, uh, and really using this platform is kind of seamless in the same environment. You can set tolerance issues as well and create tolerance mapping. So here we're getting the checks telling us whether or not that hole is actually even within tolerance or not, and how much did the hole deviate uh, from um, the ideal structure geometry. Okay. Um, moving on to the, the same uh, touch probe here, same circles. I just want to show you a different example, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, same thing here. We're just looking at the bottom of the hole. Um, and so we're going to start by building our plane. So we're seeing that example again, building five points. Um, the little overview that you're seeing here is the fact that we have this little remote. Again, if you're familiar with Aramis, you've seen this remote for calibration. Uh, well, for Pontos, this little remote becomes your best friend and allows you to just like scroll through the actions and save and, and move into the motions uh, by saving the locations of your points uh, with the remote control. So we built five points to build uh, the plane. We have our normal surface at the bottom of the hole, and now we're doing five points around sorry, of the uh, of the cylinder, and we're going to measure, therefore, its, uh, its shape. And in this case here, we had a smaller measuring volume as well, uh, and we're looking at an even better quality. We're looking at uh, less than uh, half a mil um, displacement. Okay? Uh, sorry, uh, air. Um, so really, really accurate machine. Now, the other thing that we can definitely do here, and I'm, I'm willing, reeling back into a little bit of the testing world, but um, I mentioned alignment at the very beginning of the presentation as well, saying, hey, well, we don't need to do this just off of six, um, six coordinate points like we typically would do uh, with a ferroharm, for example. We can actually build really complex alignments here based on cylinders and creating axis and creating geometrical-based uh, alignments. Um, that touch probe can therefore create coordinate systems on parts. You can then attach those coordinate systems to your point cloud, and you could track all of these features later, either in Pontos here if it's about positioning or in Aramis if it's later about seeing how these interact together with parts during um, normal operations, for example. So if we look at this quick example, again, we have our Pontos, um, well, the Aramis, sorry, system on the left-hand side. Uh, and we're going to get into the Ponto software just in a second. We're building here a best fit plane at the bottom of that like marble table. Um, so using, again, five uh, nodes, we're going to be building a best fit plane. Then we're creating an alignment here based on that fixture. So just an alignment for the Y axis um, and automatically creating that X, Y, Z based off of that. Okay. So another example here of using the touch probe, not just to measure things, but also to build components, build uh, constructions that can be tracked in 3D space. The last part, and this is the part we're actually going to dive in right, uh, right next with Steve in a minute, uh, is, um, is talking about adapters. So adapters is really a, an amazing con a concept uh, to track a feature based on other point clouds. So we saw the touch probe, you know, giving us location at the tip of the touch probe. Um, and we have, of course, a little bit more features there so we can uh, account for the ball uh, uh, circumferences and create normal uh, vectors and so on. But if we have smaller tasks, we can actually build really amazing uh, smart tools, um, which are called in here adapters. The idea here, as you can see in this video, um, Steve uh, 3D printed a small little T-bar and put a few dots on it. Uh, he took a quick Pontos measurement and build a location at the center right there. You can see that, uh, that arrow, uh, that green arrow. And at the center of the location right there, he built a point adapter. What this means now is we have a location in 3D space that's virtually attached to this point cloud. And whenever the, the adapter moves, that point that's hidden in our field of view is automatically tracked and, uh, and can be um, followed in 3D space. This quick video shows us actually how we can use this to do a similar kind of quick touch probe measurement in a way, but using an adapter. Um, the first thing we saw here is that little wheel activating uh, using the core system. Um, it is an Aramis system. It's just slightly smaller and more compact for smaller fields of use. 
The core actually has a projector in the middle. So we're projecting the location that we want to measure. It automatically detects where did we bring the adapter to. We brought the adapter closer to reference point two, and that's why it started showing us reference point two. As we're going to get closer to reference point three here, you automatically see the projector telling us, hey, here's where you should be going, roughly. And uh, now we're tracking the distance between the location at the center of the hub of that adapter and the precise location. Again, these adapters can be built in Pontos, but then you can track them in Aramis as well. So you could create all of these complex shapes and start tracking things that are otherwise not in line of sight to your single stereo camera pair. So you could do, you know, a long like banana structure. Actually, I think Steve did do a banana adapter at one point uh, where we just wanted to measure something in the back. So we created a point at the tip of that, uh, of that probe. Um, and, you know, we had, we were just seeing the, the tip of it with the system. The rest of it was all hidden behind a structure. Uh, we were able to measure points that were hidden behind uh, our line of sight. So really great uh, strategy here using adapters. And on the right-hand side, you're seeing a smaller one, uh, which I believe is, uh, no, actually, we're going to be doing one on, on an arrow. Uh, but on the right side, you're just seeing a different shape, just showing you, you know, you can build those adapters any way you'd like um, within minutes just by taking a few shots and then creating that, uh, that assembly, that detachment between the point in 3D space and the point cloud that's going to be tracked. Um, and I mentioned the core having projection. And it's not something that you know, we use a lot, but it is actually possible to do back projection. Uh, and so again, if you have specific shape or structures uh, on your part that needs uh, to be uh, shown, we can project in 3D space and com constantly recompute the location based on the part, cones, structures, slots, circuits, curves, section lines, and whatnot. And the same little part that we saw earlier here, a few examples we're going to show. Let's say we have that, all, that M uh, structure uh, needs to be assembled uh, on, on our part. So we have those two section lines right there and the, uh, the contour of the M that we can project onto, uh, onto our structure in 3D space. So that can help us. Um, identify locations, really just guide the user uh, and simplify uh, the assembly process or the tracking process. So you can see here that M being automatically recomputed as we're moving, the section lines as well. So, you know, even though that's not about the precision, it's just about guiding the user and giving us like augmented reality tools uh, to bring the virtual data into the uh, real life world. So showing us those lines here, for example, to help us quickly align. And then, you know, we could finalize the assembly or the positioning uh, afterwards. Okay, so to kind of sum it up, uh, I took a little bit more time um, than, uh, than I wanted to, so um, I'm accelerating a little bit. We're going to go into a Q&A here in, in a few seconds, uh, but a Poncho slide system is, has, it is an Aramis 3D camera, a laptop, the stand or whatnot. You can use probes, you can use other accessories, you can use adapters, you can make your own, you can make your probes as well. Uh, we have kits that we can provide, but you can all, we can also help you make your own. And finally, it's the Pontos Live software. If you're some of the ones that responded at the beginning saying, we are already an Aramis customer, your license will give you access to Pontos Live right now. All you need to do is download it. I'm going to bring you up right here. Um, the right way to access this technology is, like I said, if you already own uh, the system, download Pontos right now. You can also, uh, if you can't find it uh, easily, uh, use the maintenance tool in your taskbar. And you can adapt the installation, and you can install Pontos Live, and it's going to show up on, uh, on your desktop. You can also contact Trillion for training and support. We're there for you guys. Um, if you are a maintenance plan, we highly recommend reach out to us. We're here for that. And we're going to spend some time uh, training you, and there's no cost if you're on maintenance. Uh, so make sure you, you call us and you leverage uh, your GOM plan, uh, book trainings, or take a course online. Uh, right now, through this uh, situation that we're having worldwide, we're actually offering to all the customers uh, free trainings on training.gom.com. So if there's a fee, it's waived. Uh, so go on. Now's the right time to go get trained up and uh, learn how to use Ponto. All right? Um, I'm going to end it there. Um, we're going to move on into the uh, quick Q&A. If you have any questions, right now is a great time to do so. And uh, I'm going to then end it off to Steve, who's going to uh, show you how to create and track an adapter uh, using Punto Live. Thank you very much, Charles.
As he mentioned, and now is the time for our first Q&A se session. If you have any questions that came about during Charles's presentation, feel free to ask that in the Q&A section below. While that is going on, uh, we are also going to uh, be sharing with you our second poll for the day based on everything that Charles has uh, described up to this point. We'd like to get your feedback about applications. Uh, so, uh, ben, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and prompt that survey. Feel free to respond to that, and then we'll be able to, to support you with your applications after this webinar. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to switch up the, the order a little bit of what Charles had. I'm actually going to show <laughs> how we do it, and then uh, I'll show you how to create the adapter after. So for, for our customers who, who um, own the system, uh, this will look very familiar to you. Uh, this is just the standard Aramis project, a quick project I put together. Uh, so if we see here, we'll move through our timeline on the bottom. Um, uh, we're just looking at uh, displacement Z out of plane. Uh, and we're, we're just viewing the data. So you can see here we have a hot spot right, right in the center here. Uh, and that's the displacement out of plane with our rigid body motion turned on. So we're just looking at the deflection of the surface. Uh, if we switch over to strain, we'll see we have a hot spot also uh, where that high strain area is. So after you, after you test, and you're, you're, you're reviewing your data, you know, it's sometimes it, when you go back to your panel, it's not always easy to find where this high strain was or displacement was. If you're looking at the surface, uh, the surface might look, you know, if you, if you had buckling and then um, you reduce your load, um, your panel might go back to being flat or, or curved and you don't see that spot at all. So sometimes it, it can be difficult to know where this hot spot was. Um, if we look at our, um, if we look at our surface by, by itself, we can see it's kind of hard to see where that hot spot is. So what's nice is we can create some geometry in the Aramis software that'll assist us um, in finding where that hot spot is on our panel. So what I've done here is I've created uh, a curve. That curve is just showing me the, the whole region of where my high strain was and my high displacement. And I also created a point. And that point is where the highest strain is. So now what we want to do is we want to use this information in Pontos and, and have Pontos show me where these hotspots are directly on my part. Uh, the way we do that is first we have to export uh, the point and the curve. So we're going to select the two geometries that we're interested in. Go to export. And we're going to go uh, selected elements only. Uh, what that's going to do, it's going to create a G element. Uh, a G element is a dome specific uh, file. And uh, that'll allow us to drag and drop it right into Pontos. So let me pull up Pontos. So in Pontos, I just simply drag and drop this um, that file into here, and it positioned my point and my curve right in the same right in the same spot as our as our Aramis test. So if we were interested uh, where this point is, we have a couple of options. Um, so we're going to use the uh, adapter option. Um, I gave this a uh, measuring principle of adapter, and I just told the system to track the to track the adapter to that location. So we're looking. We're going to look at our x and y positions for that adapter, and then uh, it's given the measuring principle. And a measuring principle is just simply. You're telling the system, you're telling the software how how you're going to measure that point in space, and the way we do that is we turn on our tracking. So this is our start positioning. We're going to track that point one, and we're going to do it to our reference component, which the reference component is the dots on the box. So we'll hit OK. After that, the, the system's just waiting for you to put the, the adapter in the field of view. 
So the adapter I built, it's just a, a simple 3D print. It's an arrow. And I just made this so visually it'd be easier, easier to see um, on the webinar. But I'm just tracking the tip of this arrow to that known location. So we have a Y is in the vertical direction and X is in the horizontal direction. So really easily I can position this uh, adapter to the location of where that hotspot is. And the points are telling me basically the deviation of where that point is compared to where my adapter is. So now if you wanted, you could simply just make a mark there and then uh, you would know where that hotspot is in space. Uh, another way we can do that, so that would be an, an application where you want to know very precisely down to a, a thousandth of an inch of where that hotspot is. If you're a little more lenient, um, we can simply project that crosshair directly onto the part. So with our projection feature, it's right up here. We have the option of, of line thicknesses. That's what the small, medium, and large is. I'm going to turn on medium so it's a little easier to see for everyone. So I selected the point and I selected project. It'll give me a little wheel that's spinning and then it'll project uh, a crosshair where that high strain is. So hopefully you guys can see that uh, really easily. I can tell exactly where, where that high strain is. I can mark that with a Sharpie and then um, uh, you know exactly where it is on your part. Alternatively, uh, we, we can project more information than just a crosshair. So if we want to know that entire region, this curve, we can project the entire curved region directly on the part also. So I'm going to select the curve, I'm going to project, I'll project a medium line thickness. And now we just projected that curve directly onto the part. So now you can go to your part, uh, circle it with a Sharpie, and now you know exactly where that, where that curve is. So that's uh, a pretty powerful. Uh, we, we've used this, and I've definitely used this in tests that I've done. Because um, if you're working out with composites and you're, you're looking for buckling, sometimes when you unload the structure, um, you're no longer buckling and that, that panel has gone back to its original shape. So being able to identify where those hotspots are, create geometry to then project back on to, to, your, to your surface can be, um, can be uh, pretty amazing. So uh, we're going to go back to our Aramis project now. And I just want to uh, show one more thing in here. So we just look at our surface component. If you rotate this, we have a virtual light inside the software. If you rotate this, we can see that there's, that there's a bump right on the top. Now this panel is supposed to be uh, perfectly flat, but we can already notice that there could be a disc bond right on that panel before we even start the test. So, Using the surface information can be uh, really useful also. So if we wanted to do a tap test exactly where that, uh, where that disc bond could be or that bump is, we could really easily create a curve. I'm just going to create a curve that circles around this area. So we'll do create and close. And now that we have a new curve, we just need to export this curve so we can open it in, into Pontus. So the curve selected, we have the export, selected elements only. And put this in my projects folder. Is created, and now I just need to drag it into my uh, into my Pontus project. So here's our G element. We'll drag and drop. <clears throat> it's going to ask us what we want to do. We want to add it to our part. <clears throat> so 
Now our curve two is in there. And now we can project uh, we can project curve one and curve two if we want at the same time. So then you can see if that um, that uh, initial uh, bump was causing the 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 high uh, amount of strain, or if it was um, it was just the manufacturing error. So there's our there's our two regions of interest, and you can clearly see that the manufacturing error was not contributing to the high strain uh, the high strain region. So that can be you know that, that's that's really powerful to be able to project these items back on or to locate them with an adapter. So I'm just going to save this project, and maybe we could pause for a moment, Charles, and see if we have any questions. And I'll switch over to uh, the new Pontus project to show you how to build a custom adapter. Yeah, totally fine. While you're that, uh, I wanted to add in here, um, you know. Just like what we saw here to uh, locate and position things at the end of a test. Um, again, we're all still addressing uh, maybe this uh, demonstration a little bit more to uh, existing Aramis users. Um, but uh, no matter what, uh, you can also think about uh, using Pontos not just at the end of your testing, but again, at the beginning of your test. So uh, two ways you can uh, do this here. Uh, one, uh, if you have multiple sensors you need to position or glue, um, then you know positioning your strain gauges and your LVDTs on a complex structure, you don't need to uh, find the different uh, possible alignments and so on. Just point out the locations, and then you can project them live, uh, and have really a quick way of, uh, of finding where to put those uh, those sensors. Uh, you could also uh, do the same for um, an adapter, and having maybe you know a small adapter or a small arrow like we had there. It could be an arrow with a window in there. Where you can just bring in your uh, your strain gauge in and uh, position right in the right location, and just press on it and remove your adapter from it. Uh, so you could really do you know precise alignment of uh, um, of your sensors, of your other traditional sensors, uh, using this combination of technology. Uh, it might be a test where you're not even planning on doing any aramis, but Pontos might be uh, coming to the rescue to help you do some positioning and uh, and improve your um, your test workflow. Very nice, Charles. Uh, to Steve's point as well, a question did come in for you. Go ahead and answer that live. Uh, what are the space constraints yeah. for the Aramis system? Are there any add-ons to image tight spaces? Mm -hmm. I have a box that is roughly six inch by six inch by eight inch tall that I'm trying to image the stress and strain of a deforming fabric. The camera would be located on the base of a test stand and the fabric is being deformed downward towards the camera. You have any comments on that, Charles? Sure. So. Um, Pondos itself, like we saw, is a pretty flexible in terms of measuring volumes. Uh, we have, um, you know, I, I talked about larger uh, areas, 700 millimeters all the way to one point or actually <clears throat> five meters uh, is the kind of typical range for Pontos. But the box that actually Steve has in front of him right now is a uh, one of the smaller core, uh, and it is for less than half a meter. And are typically, you know, we use a lot uh, smaller volumes that are going to be um, about eight to six inches. Um, we have some system, the core 200 would be perfect for that <laughs> measuring area. Um, and uh, so it's a quite a small box. It's about, uh, you know, about maybe eight inches big, eight inches big, sorry. Um, and you need about three to 400 millimeter uh, from the parts, so maybe 10 to 12 inches of uh, working distance. So between the parts and the cameras to have enough um, distance to the system. But uh, you know, we can tailor that. We can adjust these, uh, both the distances and the width of the camera, the size of the structure, based on your application, uh, really, because it's all optic and it's all non-contact. So adjusting the cameras to a measurement that fits your need is something quite easy. Uh, maybe the last thing that I wanted to address here, when you mentioned, you know, the cameras could be located at the base of uh, of the test stand and uh, the fabric could be moving towards the camera. Um, so again, we have this kind of uh, what we call a measuring volume. Uh, so it's not just width and height. We also have depth of field. Um, so we can get the objects to move closer and further away from the camera. That is not a problem at all. Uh, there's a certain distance that we can uh, account for. Uh, and that's really just based on, on, op on optics. Um, so we have certain depth of field uh, based on how we um, adjust the cameras. Uh, and typically, we're going to have something like uh, 
as depth, as deep as the width. Uh, and when we're moving to smaller field of views uh, that can go down a little bit, maybe we'll have half the depth of field. So if we're doing eight inches, we might have four inches of depth of field. Um, but you're still usually going to get, you know, pretty decent uh, amount of out of plane uh, displacement that's going to be possible. That is not a problem at all. Um, you talk a bit more about deforming fabrics, so it might be that, you know, we need to talk more about Aramis uh, than Pontos for that application. Um, but regardless, both cameras are, the cameras are the same uh, for both softwares, and so all of my comments would apply to both. Very nice. Thank you, Charles. And uh, we'll follow up with the Ask Other Question after this webinar as well. I believe uh, we'll take things over to the next part of the demonstration uh, with Steve. Steve, would you like to take over? Yep. All right, so we are back into Pontos. And all I've done is drag and dropped uh, a CAD model. Uh, the GOM software likes um, IGES or STEP files. It, it tends to use STEP files uh, better, so I, I typically use a STEP file. So I drag and dropped uh, my CAD file in here. You can see here's my, my CAD and my Explorer over here. And then I created some geometry so I could locate this point in the corner of this adapter. So what this adapter is going to do is going to help me locate corners of objects really easily just by sliding it over. Uh, I built that by just building some simple um, plane geometries. And then I built an intersection of those three planes at that point. So we're going to jump into the live view. And I'm going to turn on our, our, our live image mapping. This will show me an image of what the sensor is seeing. So if we zoom in here, we can see um, my 3D printed adapter. Uh, we can see it's recognized some of the points. And Pontos is very simple to use uh, to capture these points. We can click on our button up here, reference point measurement, or if you notice, uh, it has a quick button, which is just the space bar. So if we hit the space bar, it'll take a quick shot. Um, it's asking for the temperature, and I'm in Southern California, so it's always 74 degrees. <clears throat> so we're taking one shot. Uh, we can see down here on our reference measurement, this is measurement one. And uh, unlike Aramis, uh, we don't have a timeline at the bottom. So what it's, uh, what it's actually doing, it's going to build up all these shots and stitch together the points for us. If you look at our live camera view, it will actually show me the, uh, the reference points that it's gathered. And as we rotate this, we can see uh, points that we haven't that we haven't uh, captured yet. So we can see there's a green dot in the middle of this uh, dot right here. So if we want to add that, hit the space bar again. It will take another image. And I just keep rotating this part around until I've captured all the, all the points that I need for my adapter. And so we'll rotate it again, just making sure I got all the points. Looks like I need to add one there. <clears throat> So that looks good. I think we got I think we got everything. Double check. Yep, that's all the points, and that would be it. The the, the measurement's done. Um, so we can move over to our uh, to our inspection now. And now this is a uh, uh, different than Aramis. Also, uh, now we have this image mapping that we can turn on. And unlike uh, Aramis, in the software, we took multiple angles. And it's going to show us the image where the sensor was when it took the shot. And any of these you can click on. It'll zoom in. And if you type the R button, it'll rotate the view for you. Uh, these live views are, are um, they're, they're really useful when you're doing alignments. So if we go out of live view right now, out of image mapping, and turn on our CAD model, we can see we need an alignment. Our CAD model is uh, in a different space than what our dots are. 
So this is really the this is really one of the big uh, the keys. So we need to map these points onto this CAD model um, really precisely, so we get a good alignment. Uh, we're going to do that with a three point alignment. So we'll select three points on the CAD. We'll select three three points uh, on our actual data, and I'm going to do that utilizing our picture and picture. So turn this guy on. And now I'm going to go back to my image mapping and I'm going to show one of these images so I can click directly on the image. This will make it uh, really easy, easy for me. I'm going to rotate this guy so it's in the same orientation. And now we click a nominal point on the CAD. We click a point on our actual data. We got another point here and another point on the actual data and then one more. As soon as we click this third one, you'll see the CAD model snap in the live view. It'll snap right on top. Um, but you'll also notice that this isn't a perfect alignment yet. If you can see the edges of the CAD, they're not mapped directly onto this shape yet. So this is a, this is a preliminary alignment. This just gets the two, uh, the two pieces uh, close to each other. So we'll hit OK. And now if we zoom in, we can see the we can see a point there, but the rest of them they're kind of buried. We can't see them yet. So we're going to, to um, well first I want to build a point component. So this will this will make it a little bit uh, a little bit easier for us. Um, so I'm going to go to construct component point component. And this is just going to um, turn these reference points into a, an actual component. So I'm just going to click on add the dots, found all of them, hit create and close. And now we can see all of our dots there. We'll go to, we're going to use a local best fit. So the software is now going to use all these points and it's going to try to fit them directly onto the surface. So that probably happened really fast, so I'm going to do it again. So we can see now that these edges line up right on, right onto the CAD model. Uh, we can also see a deviation here. So here's my results, and the deviation is uh, just over a thousandth of an inch, and that's the deviation of the mapping of the dots directly onto the CAD model. So we'll hit OK, and now if we go back, we can see, should be able to see our dots lying right on the surface now. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger so you guys can see them easier. large. Okay. So now we can see our points are lying directly on the surface. What I like to do is zoom in and I look at the points and these points are actual spheres. So if those spheres are being cut in half, I know the alignment's really good on the surface. So this alignment looks great. After your data is aligned to your, to your uh, CAD model, now we can go ahead and build the adapter. We have, we have all the geometry we need and now it's, uh, the process is really easy. We'll go to Operations, Adapter, and I'm going to build a point adapter, so we're just going to be tracking uh, a point. We do have other options. Uh, we can track edges, planes, uh, cylinders, spheres, inner and outer bores, uh, vectors, and lines. Well, but for this one, we'll just do a simple point adapter. So this brings up our dialog box for the point adapter. Um, I'm just going to call this the T point adapter. It's asking us what point we want to use for tracking. And I want to track point one that I created. And now we need to select the dots that we're going to use for tracking. So I'm going to use my reference point selection tool. Draw a window over this. And then we'll rotate, make sure all the dots are selected in red. All of my dots are selected. 
and then we right click in our window, add selected points. So that's gonna bring up all of the points that we, that we had not selected in the 3D view. And then we need to tell it how many points uh, we need to see. So for this one, I'm gonna say four. What that means is any four points it sees on this adapter, it's going to identify the adapter and it's going to know where that point is in space. And the identification threshold, um, you can modify this. Uh, I'll leave it at about, you know, about two thousandths of an inch and hit create and close. And that's basically it. You just created your adapter. And if you want to see where your adapters live, it's in the application uh, settings preferences under templates adapters. And here's our T point adapter right there. Uh, now this adapter can be used uh, in any project, uh, um, in any project that you have in Pontos, um, and it'll track that point that we built um, in space. So go ahead and save this, and we can open it up to questions. Awesome! Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah. We did have one question that came in again for Charles. Um, can I use Pontos if I have an Aramis high speed system? Uh, interesting. Yes. So uh, an Aramis high speed system, right, is uh, is going to depends what's your your high speed system. Uh, if you have an Aramis SRX high speed system, uh, then yes, absolutely, it's going to be completely seamless. Uh, if you have a pair of high speed cameras that you're using to do uh, to do testing. Uh, maybe drop testing especially. Um, it's not quite as seamless, but I think it's even more uh, relevant and essential. Uh, we have a lot of uh, customers that uh, use Pontos to build the structures, to build the geometries of the point clouds. But even though they're not seeing all of the points on, uh, on the article that's being dropped, uh, at the beginning of the test, then they can track its six degrees of freedom motion as it tumbles and maybe uh, throughout the drop, really track features and angles of, um, of drop of uh, different products. So it can be really interesting to build a uh, Pontos point cloud. It can, be, it can be key to making a high-speed uh, test data really meaningful. Uh, now, if you already have a uh, high-speed system, uh, then you'll need just a, a smaller um, quasi-static uh, Aramis camera pair, which is going to run at lower speed. Uh, you can use this obviously in the lab for a variety of other applications, uh, but we have some people that just get uh, those to build point clouds. Um, so really simple and uh, and straightforward application here. If you're if you're doing high speed testing, uh, I highly recommend uh, thinking or considering uh, Pontos if you're doing especially drop testing and things are coming in and out of your field of view. Uh, that can be super helpful. Um, one other thing that we didn't really totally mention um, is that. Uh, using the uh, the point cloud creation here, we can use this to align multiple Aramis systems into one, um, which means that we can have different angles of, or viewpoints uh, during another test um, by simply referring all of this to our fixtures, so to a component that's sitting in the middle or something like that. Um, that means that you know creating a Pontos point cloud could be also essential uh, to do multi points or multi location. Uh, Measurement. So you could have, for example, multiple sets of cameras that track the trajectory of an article uh, during a high-speed test. And even though, you know, during part of the test, it's not seen by some of the pairs of the cameras, uh, as it travels and goes from one measuring volume to the other, this could all be considered as a single uh, project with all of those different field of views being uh, merged and stitched together through uh, Pontos Point Cloud. Um, I think there was another question here from uh, Sam um, Sherry, who's asking, can we see the adapter in real time now? Uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, what you meant. This was uh, real time. Uh, so we were seeing uh, the real time. Do you, do you mean that you're, you, you'd like to see it track the position on the box again or something like that? Uh, if so, maybe you can su submit an, another uh, question. We can also follow up with you um, if we want to hop in on an individual um, Zoom meeting. It might be easier and all faster because there was a little bit of lag uh, in the connection here since we have a lot of people on the line. Um, 
but up to you. Just uh, submit another uh, little question here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll address it. Um, okay. Yeah. Other than that, uh, this webinar will be made available via our YouTube channel if you'd like to uh, take a look at this uh, webinar again as a resource. Uh, as always, we're here uh, for support as well if you'd like to implement this into your own applications. Otherwise, Charles and Steve, I, I think that wraps, wraps it up for today unless there's anything else. Uh, thank you all very much for joining us today. Hopefully the uh, webinar was of value to you and we look forward to supporting you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yes, thank you.